What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video here, we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Adobe. Now, this company was requested by Marcus. Marcus, if you're watching this video, this one's for you, man. And uh, look, you ask and you shall receive. Let me know what companies you want to evaluate. Just put it in the comments below. I'm more than well happy to analyze any companies you guys throw at me. So this is actually an interesting company because I want to get to it eventually. So I moved it up for my buddy Marcus. And we're gonna take a look at it right now. We're gonna dig into the fundamentals, the financials, and finally determine a price to pay for Adobe and determine what is this company really worth and should you invest into it. So without further ado, let's jump into Adobe and we're gonna load it up in our stock research tool. So here's Adobe. Now we are experiencing somewhat of a dip. It's a $210 billion company. We hit a high of almost $700 in the 52 week range. Now we're sitting at $445. So trading at a little bit of a discount. And uh, I, I'm excited about that. I like that. I like that a lot actually. So we're gonna jump into our first uh, section here and this is the company metrics. So what I like to do here, if you're brand new to the channel, is I like to compare the five year numbers of Adobe to the trailing 12 months to see if we're making some improvements and just generally get a, a feel for where this, this company's doing and where it could potentially go. And off the top here, I'm noticing we have a pretty high PE ratio, but we you know what, we're slowly bringing it down from 49 down to 43. EPS has improved from 10.15 over our five year average of 7.16. Return on equity is consistent and staying high. Profit margin is also staying high at 29%. These are really, really solid numbers so right off the bat i like an adobe so far um jumping in to the revenue we are at 16.14 billion dollar in revenue net income 4 billion free cash flow 6 billion and we're over our five-year average and that five-year average is at 4.4 4.5 billion dollars we don't pay a dividend so that's a lot of free cash flow I mean, listen, I don't doubt it because this is, you got to know Adobe software. This thumbnail that you, the reason you probably clicked on this video was made in Adobe Photoshop. I've, I went to school when I went to school. I learned how to use Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere. They run, they, they have a whole suite of pretty much industry standard um, programs. And uh, this is coming from someone that went to film school and uh, just was fell in love with video editing and stuff like that. I mean, listen, I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible editor. I, I like it, but I'm a terrible editor. And the, the software is phenomenal and they are on a subscription based. Like, listen, there's no surprise to me why this company brings in this amount because their stuff is everywhere and it is the go-to standard. You talk to any creative person, they probably have the whole Adobe suite on their MacBook, PC, whatever. It's, you think editing, you think Adobe. Simple as that. Almond Z score, we're sitting at 13.24 with a Piotrowski score of seven. Now that number is pretty decent. We want this number to be between seven and nine, nine being the highest number we can possibly achieve. Now our Almond Z score is incredibly high at 13.24. Now granted folks, we want this number to be over three and this usually pertains to businesses that have a lot of tangible assets. Adobe is a software company, so they're not really moving physical products. You're, when you're subscribing to the software, you pretty much get your code, download it, and away you go into your computer. So you're not actually getting any, like, any disks. It's just completely digital and electronic, so they don't have any overhead costs of manufacturing those physical products. So take that as a grain of salt. I, I typically ignore it with software companies like this. So it is what it is. So with these categories right here, just based off what I'm seeing, I'm liking Adobe. They have, they've been pretty consistent with their five year numbers. They're above on their five year free cash flow number or average and uh, pretty strong revenue and pretty strong net income. Now, the only thing that's bothering me right now is their PE ratio, but we'll dig into that in just a little bit in our financial evaluations category. But overall, strong numbers thus far. Good pick, Marcus. Well, let's jump into our financial valuations next category, and we'll grade this company. 
So that will be right here. Now, out of 10, the software is grading this an 8 out of 10, and we're only losing two points in two categories, one being our five-year PE ratio. So it is slightly high. We want this number to be under 22.5, and unfortunately, we don't have that. And the current ratio where we want this number to be over 1.5. Now, 1.5 would indicate that they have enough assets on hand to cover their liabilities. And it being at 1.0, they can still cover the li their liabilities because they have the, the assets to match it. However, we want that 0.5 in there as just an extra cushion, as a margin of safety, because that's what we're all about, folks. We're all about margin of safety and being as conservative and rational as possible. Now, with this five-year PE ratio, this is a pretty quick growing company it's a fast growing company so if we can figure out what this growth will be over the next let's say 10 years once we jump into our price analysis if they can justify this high number then you know what this is something i could probably put in the back of my mind and won't really care like it, it it's not a make or break number that's what i'm trying to say now, going through all the other positives of this business, we have a high return on the equity, which we want to be over 15. We have that at double that at 30%. EPS growth, growth is phenomenal. Look at that, like almost a thousand percent growth over the last five years. Like that is absolutely insane. And, and as we ex expressed in the company metrics, 7.16 to 10.15. These are phenomenal numbers, folks. And the price is going down. I'm liking this. I'm, I'm liking this. Debt to equity, we have at 30.93. We want that number to be under 50%. That means that they're growing the business through equity and not through debt. So amazing point over there. Share dilution, now they're buying back shares at 0.83. Mm, it's a slight buyback in shares. It's nothing too crazy. However, it's they're buying back shares nonetheless, which is great because that allows you to have much more ownership of the business. Now, the only caveat with that, is that the right word? I, I think so. The only, I guess, the discretion with that is if these shares that they were buying back pr prior or previously at the $700 range where this company was currently at at the beginning of, or at the, let, let's say the tail end of 2021, and they were essentially overvalued and overpriced, then it's somewhat burning through your free cash flow. We want companies buying back shares if the company is undervalued, which we'll determine in a quick second. So I'm happy that they're buying back shares. I just don't want them buying back shares if the company is overvalued. Jumping into the net income growth, we have huge growth here. Same with our free uh, cash flow. We have growth over there as well, 151% increase over the last five years. Return on invested capital, folks. Return on invested capital. I realize I skipped that category in our company metrics. However, we're going to touch, touch upon it here. 23.29% on average. Guys, that's phenomenal. We want this number to be 10% or higher, and we have that. In our company metrics category, though, just to just jump back for a quick second, our trail in 12 months is 31%. That's amazing. They know how to get a good return on the capital that's invested, and we love to see that. Now, our five-year revenue growth, we've grown the company in revenue 21. I don't know why I said we. Like, we're like guys, we're the board members here. We're Good job. Thanks for coming out. We're growing this company. But they have grown the company 21 or 22% over the last five years. So these are phenomenal numbers to see. So, so far, Adobe, killing it. Love it. I'm loving it so far. These are all healthy numbers. Now we'll see how big of a play these uh, this PE ratio uh, kicks in once we jump into a price analysis. But so far, the numbers are screaming amazing business so far. I don't know how many times I said that. I, I apologize. Um, before we jump into a price analysis, though, folks, if you're enjoying the video so far, <laughs> I got to stop. I got to stop saying that. It's like... If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. It helps me get a good night's sleep because I don't love myself enough to go to bed at a reasonable time. Anyways, let's go back to the video. We're going to do a price analysis and see what this company is currently worth. So smash that like button, smash the subscribe button if you're enjoying this, this video. Now, here we go. 
into a price analysis. We're going to do a 10 year evaluation as always, and we're going to do three different estimates, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. Now I'm going to populate these numbers here and I'm going to see what this brings us. So I'll touch base with you in just a quick second. So stand by for that. All right, folks. So I populated our categories here. Now, if you notice, and if you're brand new here, I went as conservative as possible. I went on the, under a 10 year evaluation. Now with the revenue growth, I know we've, we've shown 20 to 21, 15% growth. So I'm going to just chop that in half uh, based off the five year and 10 year numbers. I'm going to go 10, 12 and 13%. Now you're probably wondering why you're going so conservatively because I have to put a margin of safety in. And if I don't, it's going to ultimately hurt the evaluation because listen, I, and I've said this in previous videos, I want to be on the good side of wrong where I want them to crush my numbers. I want to be wrong in terms of, in the sense that they do 15% revenue growth. They do, let's say they keep doing 20% revenue growth. I want them to do those numbers, but I want to evaluate them as if they only did half that. And if the numbers make sense, bro, we're jumping in. Well, after more due diligence, but you know what I mean. Profit margin, we're going to keep this somewhat of a discount. I believe they can probably hit this around 25 number, but I want to give them a 10% oh, 10 off the top. So 20, 25, and 21. I know they can probably hit that 21 number because they did that in the last 10 years. So that's not a problem. So we're going to hover around those, those numerics right there. Same thing with free cash flow margin, just taking uh, like 10 off the top. So 30, 31, and 32 and a half. Price to free cash flow and PE ratio. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit messy, folks, because we're sitting at 30.81 and our PE ratio currently is at 43.64. So with that in mind, we're going to have to assume a low PE after 10 years because as a company gets larger, it's hard for the company to grow. So we have to assume that there's going to be a, a lower PE in the future. So with that in mind, we did 13, 15, 17 for PE ratio and price of free cash flow is 14, 16, 18. Now we're going to put our desired return in, which would essentially seal in our margin of safety. And we're going to do 13% return. And folks, we're red pretty much almost across the board with the exception of our aggressive category in the price to free cash flow calculation. Now, this is what I was talking about, folks, when I was talking about that PE ratio being high. And look, that's just under half, right? And it's almost there. It's almost there. Now, if you look at the conservative average, right? 230, look, our 263 on DCF, but our average is 232. Our current price is 445, but the PE ratio being at 43. So just under half would essentially this company would have to fall in half from its current price in order to justify these numbers. Now, granted, these are at 10% revenue growth. Now I could, let's say, jump this up to say 20. Look at that here. Look how it, look how it changes 22 and two and let's say 20 and say 20. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me be a little bit more conservative, but look at that by, by saying sticking at 20% revenue growth over the next 10 years, look how it just changes every single number. So if I just do a slighter, more aggressive margin of safety and we go 17 and then maybe we'll go 20 on the high side. So here we go. Look at this folks. I'm using a less, I'm using a smaller margin of safety, assuming a 15% revenue growth on the low side and it's sitting at 362. This is the number I really want to hit. I want to hit the conservative average. These numbers are great. This is like a unicorn wish list number. And, and whenever I put my aggressive numbers in, this is, this is what, if, the, if, if this hits, phenomenal, but the conservative and moderate category, that's where the bread and butter of my evaluations come from because that's how I know, all right, this is something that's probably going to work out. Now, with a 70% revenue growth, you're getting somewhat of a discount based off the five-year and one-year numbers, but I, I don't really count the one-year. It's just because it's just a, it, a one-off. However, if you believe, if you believe that the Adobe can grow at 70%, 17% revenue growth over the next 10 years, assuming these profit margins and price of free cash flow, 
you're getting it at a discount. You're getting it at a discount at 538 being the average price. So buying it at $445 at today's price, you would essentially make that 13% return per year. Obviously, same goes for our aggressive category, but that's where it essentially would hit. Now, would you like would I do that? Uh, it's tempting. It really is. It is super tempting. But ultimately, you, for me, I have to stay conservative. I have to stay in the realm of 10, 12, and 13. Now, maybe this is a little bit too too conservative. I mean, let me know what you guys think. But I don't know what the future brings for this company. I don't know what it brings for... Like, they are a dominant force in, in what... In, they're a dominant force in what they do. There's no doubt about that. However... How can I justify them growing consistently at that amount? You know what I mean? Like I need to, like there's got to be years. There's gonna, I can't see into the future. So there's going to be years. There have to be years in the future where there's going to be some ups and downs. Now, how bad are those downs? How bad are those ups? Or how good are those ups? I'm not too sure. So that's why it's important and imperative to be as conservative as possible. Perhaps 10% revenue growth is way too conservative and maybe in the 15% range would make a lot more sense. And doing that, if I just go jump back into here, let me see what that looks like again. Doing that would bring me up to $362 to pay for this company. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> It's, it's it. That's definitely a number I can I can deal with at the current valuation. But if you agree that it's going to grow, and as we expressed, seventeen dollars or seventeen dollars, seventeen percent revenue growth, you know, this would essentially be a buy in this category. But this is something. This is something I'm going to definitely put. This is a company I'm definitely going to put on my watch list and wait for it to just decrease in price. It, it's hitting all the right metrics. It's hitting, essentially, it's hitting all the right metrics. It's just slightly overvalued, just based off this PE ratio that's kind of driving up the price. I need it to fall a little bit more. Like, when were those prices? I want to just jump back in here, see the chart here. But look, 2020, oh my God. If you caught this, if you caught this company at in 2020, as soon as that uh, the pandemic hit, Oh, dude, you were laughing. 285 it got on March on uh, March 12th. 285, and then it's just been on just been on an absolute tear. Now I'm hoping, and I don't know what the reason is for in in regards to this this price drop. I, I don't really pay attention to the news to be honest, because I, I'm just trying to find businesses that are trading below their current evaluation, right? And for for me, I I feel like all stock news is. Um, just noise, but it does help when it helps drop down these prices below their current evaluation. That's when I really enjoy. That's when I really enjoy the news because it allows me and other fellow value investors scoop up company shares at uh, a lower price. Now, what are my thoughts? Final thoughts on Adobe? Uh, essentially, this. I'm gonna wait for this company to just keep dropping down more and more. I might, you know, reevaluate it in a in a little bit and see if the seven the 17% revenue growth and 15% revenue growth makes sense. If it goes it gets sub four hundred dollars now, let's say into the three eighty range. Now that's something I could probably get behind. But ultimately I need to do a little bit more due diligence and say, you know, where where's the competitor? What what are they really facing? But overall, it's it's been growing pretty quickly. It's at a $210 billion company. Now, yeah, like, it looks good. It just, it looks good. It's just the price doesn't make sense right at the moment. But you know what? I'd rather have that than a fundamentally bad company. Because then, you know what? With this, I can wait. I can wait until the price gets into a proper, proper, proper range. And as the company's fundamentals improve you know what maybe this price would make sense so that's that's the thing folks 
you have to the price has to make sense of the fundamentals so far the fundamentals are phenomenal but the price is just a little bit too high and i need it to come down and that's my thought that's my those are my thoughts on adobe amazing pick marcus once again i'm gonna call you out because uh yeah uh this is going on the watch list i i, I pretty much use adobe products every single day and uh i mean it would only make sense for me to own this company because what they make is phenomenal I just need the price to make sense. Anyways, guys, that's the video. I'll stop rambling. If you like the video and you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. It's down here. And if you want more stock analysis videos, you can follow. Sorry, follow. You can follow this playlist right up here. Anyways, guys, that's the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.